welcome back to A Book Binger. My name's Shelby, and I am a girl who's binging a new book each week instead of binging Netflix. Let's get started on this week's book. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcast, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, fellow book lovers. I am so excited for this week's episode. I'm going to be introducing the book Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Mansakako. And because you guys enjoyed it so much last week, I'll read you guys the book description. Two sisters, one brutal murder, a quest for vengeance that will unleash hell itself, and an intoxicating romance. Amelia and her twin sister, Victoria, are streg, witches who live secretly among humans, avoiding notice and persecution. One night, Vittoria misses dinner service at the family's renowned Sicilian restaurant. Amelia soon finds the body of her beloved twin, desecrated beyond belief. Devastated, Amelia sets out to find her sister's killer and to seek vengeance at any cost even if it means using dark magic that's been long forbidden. Then Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked, princes of hell. She has been warned against entail since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side, tasked by his master with solving a series of women's murders on the island. But when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. Has that given you chills yet? (laughs) So I also wanted to do something new, and I wanted to introduce you guys to the author. So Carrie Mansacalco grew up in a semi-haunted house outside New York City. And if you guys know anything about me, I love New York City. I lived there for a period of time, so I just bonded with Carrie immediately. Anyway, because she lived in New York City, her fascination with gothic setting began in her semi-haunted house. In her spare time, she reads everything she can get her hands on, cooks all kinds of food with her family and friends, and drinks entirely too much tea while discussing life finer points with her cats. She is the author of the number one New York Times bestselling Stalking Jack the Ripper Quartet. Okay, so now that I've introduced you to the book and I've introduced you to the author... I have another person I want to introduce you to. Her name is Jamie, and she is one of my best friends, and she recommended this book to me. So I thought, what better way to talk about the book than to bring her on board? Hey, Jamie, how's it going? Hey, Shelby, I'm doing good. How are you? (laughs) I am so good. And can I say, I am so excited to finally be talking about this book with you. Oh, I've been dying to talk about this for a long time. Ever since I finished the book, it's just been killing me. I've been wanting to talk to someone about it and didn't know who had read it. So (laughs) I'm very glad you read it. I'm so glad that you recommended it. Seriously, like when I texted you a couple days ago and I told you that I had finished it, I just wanted to dive into it with you right then and there. But like I said, I wanted to make sure that we unleashed all of our excitement on this podcast. (laughs) Yes, and I'm very glad. Otherwise, there would be nothing left to say here. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I have a list of questions that I wanted to ask you. But the big thing that was on my mind was, like, how did you find out about this book and what attracted you to read it? So I follow on Instagram a... um, this, well, it's, a, it's a group of ladies and it's called the novel bound podcast i, I think that's what it's I called i follow and them they... too oh that's awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah i love great them. recommendations <laughs> okay so 
Yeah, so I like saw this story where one of them had received the book in the mail, and they were so excited about it, and thought, oh, I should that looks kind of cool. So I looked looked into the book, and um, yeah, I found it on Libby, which is the the reading app that I use, and just got hooked right away. So it was so good. That's awesome. That's so funny that we follow the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're bound to follow tons of the same people, but. Yeah, it's um, true. both book lovers here. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you usually read um, books like this, like young adult? Um, what what would you call this, like fantasy uh, books? Yeah, I'm usually into that kind of stuff. Mostly, I'm I've been reading the historical fiction, but I think with it being October, I kind of wanted to dive into the Halloween spooky setting, and so this was a perfect book because it definitely spooked me for the first few bit first part of it you know I right nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah this book can give you nightmares also I knew that we were best friends because I love his fiction too so oh perfect it's you so know good. anyway <laughs> anyway but, yes but yeah. this book was just amazing I just just so like the author I I don't know how she's so good with her words but she's just incredible at you know having you envision where the character is at and the things she's feeling and you feel like you're right there with them and it's just so amazing and I just I, I, I just dived right in and just felt like I was in that world yeah seriously I don't know if she's actually been to Sicily or not but I felt like she had been because she described it so perfectly yeah it would make sense and I did read up on her too how like when she grew up she lived in this I guess a bit of a spooky house, which inspired her to write spooky things. And I don't know what happened to that house, but man, she did a good, a good job. <laughs> oh, seriously. Also, just want to make sure everybody knows that there will be some spoilers about the book on here because Jamie and I love this book so much. We, we can't just not talk in depth. So <laughs> if you guys haven't read it yet, stop now. Just go read it because it's that good. But if you do want to hear our insights, then continue to listen because we're going to dive into some of that. So uh, you said that you had nightmares. Tell me what was <laughs> <laughs> what was like because you mentioned that in your text before that, you know, the beginning was like really terrifying. So like what exactly, you know, was scary to you at the beginning? Um, The description of everything. So when um she like I'm forgetting her name now but the main character um she finally got murdered and the way they describe the room and like the person licking her blood and <laughs> the way her chest looked like that whole I could just envision it perfectly in my head and it freaked me out right um, oh my gosh yeah so Amelia and then her sister Victoria yes there we go yeah oh I yeah, that was terrifying. I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to have to find your relative, let alone your twin, with her heart just ripped out of her body. And yeah, oh, some man licking her blood. I was like, what the heck is wrong with this? <laughs> I remember reading this and screaming. I was in the car with my husband. He was driving and he was looking like, you okay? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. I'm oh, that's dead. awesome. And, oh. Because I also thought that she would have a longer um, story, like Victoria, right? it, but she died. <laughs> yeah, she died in like what chapter, like two or three or five or something like that. It was very quickly. Yeah, yeah so that scared me. And then just like, the whole like walking through the monastery in the dark and feeling like she was being <laughs> followed and seeing the dead people all over. Yeah. Um, oh just- my gosh. Seriously, I wasn't anticipating it because it's a young adult book, which, I mean, I was a little naive on that part because young adult books can be terrifying. But I was like, oh, you know, it's not going to be like super, super creepy. Bam, right at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like right from, the, yeah, it just dives you right in. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that was just the main part of it. I was just so scared she was going to find other murders and we're, with this kind of description um but thankfully it doesn't get too gory and too scary from then on um, yeah but 
I mean, I guess if you're scared of the demons, then that might be scary too, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does a really great part at describing the brothers of hell too. I mean, mm-hmm. it, like you said, it's not gory and I really make it gory. Cause she could have, if, yeah. if you're talking about demons of hell, I mean, you can make it pretty disgusting. But she did a really good job at not doing that. Yeah, and she did. And speaking of demons, what did you think of Wrath? Okay, so I was, you know, I was hesitant because he's he's Wrath and he's a, a demon of hell. And so, you know, Nona's over here and she's like, don't trust them. And then Amelia's like, help me. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I still don't know if I'm on his side or not. I can't, I can't tell if, I, if he's someone to trust. I know it's so hard because at the end he then like turns all icy and cold, right? After you feel like he's gaining her trust and kind of changing and whatnot, and then Nona's like, "Oh, there's the like the myth that the demons of hell will fall in love with a witch," and you're like, "Okay, well maybe that's it, you know? Maybe." Wrath will just fall in love with her. But then at the end, he's all like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm so excited for the second book, because I just really hope that they explore more of that with the two of them and, like, at least win a friendship back, because that was just devastating. Right. Well, and they had the tattoo bond. Like, that wasn't resolved at all. Yeah. Oh, like, they're, they're is, is that like just going to go away? Yeah, oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I hope, I don't think it will, personally, but I still think right. she's engaged to him, too. So, I think, well, didn't she say, like, oh, I release you from, because she has to to release him. Didn't she say that when she found out about the marriage bond? I thought she released him from I, that. I, maybe she did, but I, I thought there was still something more official. But, but maybe she did. I, well, because. Like I, said, I don't have the book on me, so I'll have to double check, but. I think yeah, I was just I... reading it so intensely because I was just, you know, like, <laughs> so into what was happening that I probably just, I missed that detail. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I breezed through this book. Like I said, we went on our camping trip, and let's see, I started it in the car, and then I finished it the next evening. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> like... I, you know, I was so scared. It probably took me two weeks to, like, be able to be brave again and read it. <laughs> oh man yeah we were so one of our days camping it was raining and it was really windy so we just decided to stay in the tent and I just read so I'm in this little tiny tent out camping and there's wind pounding against our tent and it's raining and it's cold and I'm reading this terrifying book and I'm like I can't get over it <laughs> oh like, my god! finish <laughs> How did you not let your mind go wild like that? I just can't even do that camping. Oh, uh, you know, I was just so I knew I had nothing else to do during the day. So that was probably a big reason why I was able just to hone in. And my husband, he just had his phone and was watching videos. So like we just kind of did our own thing and we were all huddled up in our sleeping bags. And so it was super easy for me to just put all of my attention towards this book. And oh, and man. yeah, I mean where that's what you can do is you can just like like you said you feel like you're there yes oh yeah yeah that was nuts um and so speaking of that like what was your favorite part like what was something that really stood out to you or one of the sections that you enjoyed the most oh man I know it's hard I don't even know there was just so much like it like the intensity just built and it was always super intense yeah um, I don't know if I can even pinpoint a favorite part um I loved her well I I just I think it comes back to wrath where it's like she meets all these demons and she has different crazy encounters with all of them but I loved maybe it's because I'm just a romantic at heart but just like seeing her connection and relationship with wrath it, it, it felt really good so yeah. I think I just that's be- where I just enjoyed it because I also wasn't terrified because I knew Val <laughs> like taking care of her. Yeah. yeah. Well, I loved when he like got that like castle or whatever he calls it, the mansion. It's either yeah. a castle or a mansion, something like that. And he's like, "Oh, it's protected. Like you need to come move in with me." 
<laughs> yes. She's like, and I loved it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah, that was the end of my thought. <laughs> okay. And I was going to say, I also loved that he gave up his powers for her for to save her life. I, you know, was not expecting that. Like, I didn't anticipate him coming in at all because he was like, you know, if you go there, I'm not coming to help you. <laughs> yeah. She was like, well, duh, that's fine. And then he shows up and I was like, okay. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's just so, really it's like any part with Raph where he was just there. I just loved it because I was just hard for rooting for them. And it's just, I don't know. He's, he's just amazing. And so, so that's why I'm like so torn by the end of the book. And like, I'm just so excited to read the second book because I just want to know more of their story. So. I know that ending I wasn't really expecting that ending because he did turn out to be so icy and cold yes and in the middle of the book he he started to really like I guess you know it looked like he was starting to love her but I guess kind of described it as more becoming a friend because she didn't want to think like oh he would fall in love with me because she still did kind of have this hatred towards him because he was a demon of hell yeah and so I'm kind of on the fence too I'm like well do I want to love him because if I do and I get disappointed that will really suck (laughs) yeah oh yeah I know I have hope that maybe he's just being icy as a way to protect her you know yeah like there's something about pride that she doesn't know and if he's too close or too involved and something bad could happen so that's what I'm holding on to oh I think the same thing because one of my favorite parts of the book is when he's talking to Amelia and he's like, hey, people, powerful people are only this way because they portray themselves as such, even if they don't feel powerful. Right. And so he's like trying to give her tips on how to talk to the demons of hell so that she doesn't get swept into their spells again. And he's like, you just have to be like me, you know? Just be powerful and cocky and, you know, people will yeah. take you for that way, even if you don't think you're that way. And that was probably, I think, one of my favorite parts because it can be relatable to ourselves just, you know, that in reality. True. Yeah. Yes. That's true. And I just love who she became because of that. You know, she's got so much braver and just knew she was capable of doing these things as scary as they were. Like, she just kept putting herself in the fire exactly it's awesome actually right yeah and I think she's probably one of the characters that I related to the most because at the beginning of the book she's this quiet introverted person she's you know really family oriented with her restaurant her family's restaurant and she always talks about you know just wanting to read a book and kind of curl up at the end of the day and Mm -hmm. so that's you know that that is me I feel like and but then she does when she meets Wrath and she starts to like avenge her sister she does get that courage and that bravery and I feel like probably yeah probably once I turned like 21 I really started to kind of open up myself more to that of like I don't really care what other people think I'm gonna speak my mind I'm gonna do what I want and that's how she started to become you know she understood that Using dark magic wasn't what she was taught, all these things, but she started to learn more and grow more in the world and become braver. Yeah. And that is so cool. I love that you can see yourself in her as well. Cause yeah. I, yeah, it, I agree. I feel like she, she is, she, I can see myself in her a little bit as well, you know, just overcoming fears and, um, you know, like not that being introverted is a bad thing, but. You know, she, no. <laughs> she, just, she just overcame her fears and went out of her comfort zone, which is something that I think we can all learn. Yeah, I agree. So you talked about the relationship between Wrath and Amelia. Was there any other relationship that you really liked in the book? Um, well, at first, I really liked her and Antonio. I think that's his name, right? Oh, uh, yes. The, the nun, the no, no, not the nun, the... <laughs> The, the brother. <laughs> yeah, the brother. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of Antonio, I totally knew that he was going to be bigger than what he was like portrayed as because she kept bringing him up in little ways at the beginning. 
you know, uh-huh. she's like, oh, Antonio this and Antonio that. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, he's got to be more than just this little love interest that Amelia has. There's got to be something because then he starts coming in the middle of the book, even in just these little snippets. And I was like, you know what? I think Antonio has something to do with these witches to, like dying. Not that I didn't think he was the killer, but I knew that he had something to do with it. But I, I'm just so oblivious. I didn't even know. Like once, <laughs> once they realized that he was, you know, part of it, I uh-huh. was just shocked. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't I, think. Yeah, I, 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 it's hard for me to think these kind of things. Like, I, you know, if she likes somebody, then I'm all for it. And then once they turn, <laughs> I'm shocked as them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when uh, when she starts to go to the monastery at the the end. And the the book is, like, speaking to her. And they're like, oh, she's here. She's here. And she's like, oh, but I, I hear somebody else. You know? Yeah. And I was like, you know, I bet 100 bucks it's Antonio. And then it was like, boom, Antonio, you're alive? <laughs> and I was like, do it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't I ever stop. You're like, no, you have to be that good, innocent boy. But so also, sad. like, the fact that Amelia literally is marrying Satan. Like, What? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like the thing that she's willing to do to avenge her sister. I just oh I just can't believe it. And that last line of the book, um, it seemed oh. like like I, like she was ready for the kingdom of the wicked or something. And the way that it ended, I was like, Oh, oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> yeah, I have it right here. It says, I hoped the kingdom of the wicked was ready for a vengeful queen. There you go. Oh. Yes. Oh, so good. good. <laughs> I just I can't wait to see even just what her like first line is of her next book. Oh yeah, it's got to be just, just as good. Oh. <laughs> yes. Do you did, have you ordered the second book? I haven't. No, I want to, but I'm broke, so I gotta wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm I'm waiting for it. So we'll see yeah. That. I, I mean, I see all the covers everywhere and I see so many people like on Bookstagram, they've talked about how they've already breezed through it. So I can't even, oh man, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. There you have it. Jamie and I's conversation on the book Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Mansakalko. If you have more to say about it than we did, Send me a message. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss next week's read, The Hollywood Dropout by Kiri Case, with the guest speaker, a longtime friend of mine, Mia. Thanks again for taking time and listening to a book binger. I'm just a girl binging books instead of Netflix. See you guys later.